in order to find out the electric field due to the charges induced on the surface of the spherical cavity let us first imagine a small area ds on the surface of the spherical cavity uh, now electric field direction is this way polarization direction is going to be parallel to electric field so let us consider pn as the normal component of polarization so from here pn is nothing but p cos theta and let q prime be the charge on the area ds and by definition normal component of polarization is nothing but the charge per unit area the charge here is q prime in that area ds so pn is q prime by ds or pn is equal to p cos theta that is equal to q prime by ds or i want q prime p cos theta into ds um then what is the electric field at the point c our aim is to find out electric uh, internal field at the point c now so electric field at c due to charge q prime by coulomb's law we know e is equal to q prime by 4 pi epsilon not r square so r um so r here this this is uh, distance is going to be r so e is nothing but q prime by 4 pi epsilon not r square now uh, instead of this q prime let us substitute this equation 3 so e is equal to p cos theta ds by 4 pi epsilon not r square okay so this is the electric field intensity now this electric field intensity we know it's a vector electric field is a vector quantity so if it is a vector quantity we will resolve that into two components parallel component perpendicular component okay so this electric field is along the radius r and it can be resolved into two components ex ey so first let us find out what is the parallel component see here Um, this electric field is going to be along the radius r so along the radius r we have electric field similarly bottom portion also along the radius r we have e this e is resolved into two components ex ey ex ey x meaning parallel component otherwise uh, we call it as x x axis so parallel component ey y axis perpendicular component so first let us find out the parallel component of electric field ex we know it is going to be a, the a parallel component or horizontal component so whenever we talk of horizontal component we consider cos theta because this is theta so cos theta whenever we consider this perpendicular component or vertical component we talk of sin theta so ex is nothing but e cos theta ey is nothing but e sin theta so ex we talk of horizontal component cos so ex is e cos theta ey is e sin theta so parallel component of the electric field ex is e cos theta so um, substitute equation 4 in equation 5 so instead of this e let us substitute p cos theta ds by 4 pi epsilon not r square and instead of i mean is still we have this cos theta so we are writing like this so we have p cos square theta ds by 4 pi epsilon not r square now let us write the perpendicular component as i told you perpendicular when i say vertical component vertical meaning y so ey so whenever we talk of vertical component we consider sin so ey is e sin theta but if we consider this parallel component see here one is pointing in the downward direction another is pointing in the upward direction so they get cancel out with each other okay so ey component if we take one is in the uh, this direction another is in the downward direction they get cancel out with each other so we consider only the parallel component of the electric field because permanent perpendicular components they get cancel out so perpendicular component of the electric field ey is equal to e sin theta since the perpendicular components are in opposite direction they cancel out with each other hence only the parallel components are taken into consideration okay so remember now ex is p cos square theta ds by 
4 pi epsilon naught r square. Now, we are going to consider a ring area dA. See here, in this diagram, just see the dotted line here. This is, I am going to consider this as a ring. Okay. This ring area, I am going to call it as D capital A, DA. So, we get DA by resolving this DS about AB. Okay. If you resolve this DS about AB, we will be getting this ring area DA. Okay. So, this is what is a ring. So, this ring area DA is obtained by resolving this DS about AB. Okay. So, ring area DA. So, what is the general uh, formula for ring area? Circumference into thickness. So, what is circumference? 2 pi y because y is the radius of that ring. Okay. So, see the diagram. See, this is what is y. Okay, radius. So, we say circumference is nothing but 2 pi r usually we say. But instead of r for the ring, we have this as the distance or radius y. Okay. So, 2 pi y. Circumference is 2 pi y. What is the thickness of that ring r into d theta? So, how do we get it? See here. This is going to be my, see here, thickness. So, how do you get this one thickness? It is nothing but R. In, it looks like an arc, right? So, what is this uh, thickness going to be? R into d theta will give you this portion. Okay. So, thickness is nothing but R into d theta. So, ring area is circumference into thickness. Circumference is 2 pi y. Thickness is going to be R d theta. So, instead of y, okay, instead of y, we are going to write r sin theta. Instead of y, let us write r sin theta. How do we get it? See here, this is r theta y. So, I want y. Again, y is the vertical component or we say opposite side. So, when we talk of opposite side, we talk of sin theta. So, sin theta is nothing but y by r or y is equal to r sin theta. Okay, sin theta is equal to y by r or y is equal to r sin theta. So, instead of y, let us write r sin theta. So, 2 pi r square sin theta d theta will give us this ring area dA. So, so far what is this one? It is the electric field acting at the point C due to the charge Q prime on this DS. Okay. Now, instead of DS, I have considered the ring area DA. So, what is the electric field at the point C due to the ring area DA? Instead of DS, you put DA. Is it okay? Instead of ds, you put da. So, what is the electric field due to ring area da? P cos square theta da by same thing. Instead of ds, you put da because this represents the electric field intensity due to the charge Q prime in this ring, in this area ds. Now, if I want to find out the electric field intensity due to ring area da, instead of ds, you just put da. Okay, so electric field intensity due to ring area dA is nothing but P cos square theta dA by 4 pi epsilon naught R square. So instead of dA, you substitute equation 7 because just now we got dA is nothing but circumference into thickness. So we got this uh, equation 7. So substitute equation 7 in equation 8. So what will happen? Uh, this 2 pi R square sin theta d theta is here. So, what will happen? P cos square theta um, 4, 2. So, if they will get cancelled. We will be having 2 here. Then R square, R square will get cancelled. So, we will be left with P cos square theta sin theta d theta divided by 2 
epsilon naught. Okay. So, this is the electric field intensity due to the ring area dA. Now, we want to find out the electric field present on the surface of that spherical cavity. So, that is obtained by integrating this expression within the limits 0 to pi. See, actually, if you consider this ring area, just imagine there are a number of rings here. Okay. On the surface of the spherical cavity, we are just going to see here number of rings here. So, we have got electric field intensity due to one ring. Now, we want for the uh, number of rings present. So, we will integrate. What is the limit from here to here only you have your ring. So, 0 to pi. So, electric field intensity due to the charges uh, uh, present on the surface of the spherical cavity is obtained by integrating this electric field due to one ring area between the limit 0 to pi because we have like this only ring area. We are not having like this. We are having like this. So, 0 to pi. So, um, take this expression just integrate it between the limits 0 to pi that will give E3, okay, field E3. So, P by 2 epsilon naught uh, constants, so let us take it outside the integration, we will be left with uh, 0 to, integral of 0 to pi, cos square theta, sin theta, d theta. So, actually cos square theta, sin theta, d theta, simply you can say 2 by 3, but how do you get the 2 by 3? I have just uh, written it. So, uh, integral of cos square theta, sin theta, d theta, let us just take T as cos theta. So, dt will be minus sin theta d theta. So far, we have the limits for theta. Now, I should change it for t. So, when theta is equal to 0, what is t cos 0? What is cos 0? 1. Similarly, when theta is equal to pi, what is t cos pi? Cos pi is minus 1. So, we have uh, lower uh, here, you have lower limit as plus 1, upper limit as minus 1. Cos square theta is t square. Sin theta d theta is going to be minus dt. And we know this uh, rule of integration. If you have a minus sign, you can put it as plus sign by in interchanging the limits of integration. So, we have minus 1 to plus 1. This becomes plus dt. Okay. So, if you integrate uh, t square uh, dt, you will be having t3, uh, t power 3 by 3. So, if you just substitute the limits, we will be getting 2 by 3. So, the field E3 is going to be P by 2 epsilon naught into 2 by 3. 2, 2 will get cancelled. So, E3 will be P by 3 epsilon naught. So, already we know what is uh, E int. We have seen what is E int. E int is nothing but E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4. E1 plus E2 is E. E4 is 0. So, E int is simply E plus E3. Now, we have got our E3. So, E int is nothing but E plus, what is our E3? E int is nothing but E plus, our E3 is P by 3 epsilon naught. So, finally, we have obtained internal field expression. It is nothing but E plus P by 3 epsilon naught. So, this E int is what is called internal field or Lorentz field.